Теперь попрошу вашего внимания. Дополнительно. Could I have your attention, please, right now? Well, the Polish delegation, it's terrible, they're not all in. So, I'd like to first of all say a few words that we shall now hear to a presentation by uh, the Ambassador of the Republic of Poland to Russia. I'm sharing my personal opinion. I have seen many ambassadors. Uh, they are not that visible. In Soviet times, the uh, Russian Federation, they really um, were posing great interest and best, best ambassadors would be sent here. And then they were followed by businessmen. But I want to say that here, an ambassador of Poland here to Russia, whom I haven't met before, my friends have, I would like to say that we had a friend, an expert, of somebody who wanted to help the school as an institution and a civil society and professionalism, and not only the person who has perfect command of the language, but understands the tradition, culture, and willing to build partnership relations with Poland. Moreover, this man, in point of fact, also became initiated, was it somebody who started this initiative, where the school has been enjoying excellent support from Poland for three years, and we hold excellent seminars in Poland about municipal life, which in point of fact make up this huge part of the success of Poland that we saw in those years of transformation in Poland. At that municipal life and the accent and focus in municipal life, this is something that this country did and this is where the country thought it was important for them. And this is something that would they would now allocate finances to municipalities, to local civil government. I suppose it's very much a strong point of Poland, very much as it used to be the case in Spain and in Finland. And since life is continuing from grassroots level everywhere, this is truly a great success. And what I also wanted to point out is that he's my personal friend, a friend of mine in Jura, and I now found out that he is soon to leave the country for good. And with diplomats like our distinguished guests, we want to be friends, but we want to be friends like with the, you know, like you make friends with officers, because the garrison always moves elsewhere. There's nothing doing about it. This is your job, what it's all about. But before this new class, I want to say that I don't know where you will work further, but you will always be um, an expert who we would always welcome. Thank you very much. And we begin this session. Thank you, Lena. I don't know what uh, I must say right now, uh, what words I have to say in return. Indeed, life of diplomats is very much like nomads' life. They come and go, and uh, I'm just one point that I wish to make. I would just correct what Lena said. You were saying that you had a friend and uh, in me, and this friend remains with you, no matter where I move elsewhere. This is the only thing I would like to add to what you said. Right now, do let us go for civic education. When civic upbringing, formation, uh, when I was invited to speak on this issue, I thought it was something very banal. What is it? civic education. What is it about? Everybody knows what it is. Even when I studied at school, I had the subject that was called 
Uh, citizenship. That was the name of the subject. I don't know when I was 16, maybe, or 18, in uh, high school. So for several years, I did this course of citizenship. And I was supposed to understand what the citizenship stands for. But as I was trying to pre get prepared for this lecture and went deep into the subject, I realized that this is not uh, something self-obvious, self-evident. Because I realized that I was young during the citizenship classes. I, I was trying to do something, but the point of all this is turned out to be just just ambiguous. And um, how can we understand this uh, citizenship? What are these classes about? This is something which we may mean many things. We may speak of it in historic sense of the word and uh, to think what it was like some two and two and a half centuries ago, what it looks like today. We can analyze what it meant, whether it meant I don't know, starting history, political science, arts, music, or you name it, whatever. But, I'm sorry about that. I'll switch off my mobile phone. But this is rather, let me put it this way, it would be a very sort of approach, encyclopedic approach, not very con convenient to use among these people sitting here. And um, I first of all focus my attention on the word citizenship or civic formation. Where do we get first our education in the family? Well, the teacher's manners, it doesn't really matter where we were brought up and where, be it ancient Egypt, modern Singapore, jungle of Borneo or Manhattan today. Everywhere the first education is in the family. But what follows is differences because as you meet as you take the first steps As you meet somebody, then you get ready to um, live in the society. Then, you're, it, then this education becomes different depending on the culture, country, and what society we live in, what society we are raised. Say, education might be when, say, we so go to the clans. This is where they would focus upon family ties. It would be a very different matter, and this was the case in monarchies where people were trained to become a subject. And, and very different approach would be, would be different from the other previous two would be seen in the countries of democracies. In case of democracy, we can speak that we are training and teaching people to grow up at a citizen, that we are facing civic education and citizenship. As we train to live in a democratic civil society, this is the first question we want to raise. What does it mean? The citizenship as getting ready for living in a democratic society. In principle, I think that this means two things. They are rights, duties, and, and courage. Uh, rights and freedoms, well, we're clear about it, right, at first sight. But if we look at, at rights and duties alone, we will not see any difference between between democratic and civil society and those rights. 
and to something that we do not see. Or like, what's the difference when we say go to a swimming pool? Okay, if we buy a ticket, yes, we enjoy some rights and some duties. We have a duty and the right to uh, visit, say, sauna or a gym, or we have some obligations like to shower, wear footwear. Uh, again, on the face of it, it looks like the set of rules that is related to democracy. What is the difference between swimming pool or any fitness club from living in a democratic society? This is about courage. Courage. This emotional emotional pro quality which makes a person live and sometimes live to the end to reach the final point where they're ready to put their life on the line to defend his rights and as he strives to get, get his rights he's ready to bet and to put his life on the line in case of a swimming pool of gym you know this will never happen and this is actually where courage comes where it fits in so citizenship it's all about rights it's all about duties and it's all about courage it's not something i sort of invented it's these three elements put together that are present in democracy from the very start from the democracy in ancient greece if you look at plato's or Aristotle's books and read authors in, of ancient Greece and Rome who elaborate on political systems of the ancient world, you would see that courage, kar akme in, or virtus of virtue, uh, it's an inalienable part of democracy. It doesn't exist without it. So virtue would be the English word valor. This is what makes the difference between democracy and monarchy. Because subjects, they don't expect them to be virtuous or have valor. They should serve, they should be loyal. But sometimes authors draw the line here. And. Um, so these three element rights, duties, and I will call it virtue, or valor, or courage. Democracy come in all kinds. You as participants and students in the school, as people who, who already go for some public important, something activity that is important for the public, do some social work. This is where I would draw the line between demo real democracy and formal democracy. Real democracy needs activities, needs you to show initiative and uh, to show quick wit. Whereas citizens who live in a democratic, real democracy, they fill this public space with their own activity. Formal democracy it expects, first of all, a person complying with the, it doesn't need people's enterprise activity or initiative, because activity and initiative can actually destroy the existing, uh, the status quo. This is just a very general general the difference between the between two ways or two kinds of democracy but it, to a certain extent it's justified in from my personal perspective because as a young man until I was 26 I lived in theory in formally a democracy in a democratic country it was called actually a democratic country, but in point of fact, it didn't exist. But it was the Poland of the time before 1989, where all the democratic, almost all 
and democratic institutions were in place. We had a parliament. We seemingly had local self-government. We like had voting or election, something like election, but in point of fact, all this was about not to the, did not fully correspond to real democracy. People didn't have a possibility to, to, uh, to have self-expression through various activities. Any activity was perceived was, that was not previously approved by the government was perceived with suspicion. And some people would, any unsanctioned activities, especially political activity, especially cultural, say anything in publishing, for example, without pre-approval, that might even be subject to punishment because it could destroy or violate the existing order at the time. I pointed out that this is something that was typical of Poland before 1989. That was the year when the country entered an era of transformation that led to in-depth political and economic reform. And today, we, we can celebrate 25th anniversary of the uh, onset of the transformation that started with the election that took place on the 4th of June 1980. And one of the outcomes of this process, which at the time started, was the emerging civil, democratic, really democratic society, truly democratic society. A question could be asked how this came to be possible. On the one side, you had the state, the state that seemingly like. It is not that it gave you a possibility. No, it's just that, that we're there existed a system of citizenship, of training citizens, of training people to serve the needs of the society. And how these people, those people who were raised in schools, how could they really learn very fast by very different rules? That is a very, very important point because, because in our constitution we could put whatever thing we want, but if this constitution is something that its citizens do not comprehend, if people do not really care for it, if people are not ready to go to the very end to defend it for the fundamental principles of the social system they live in, then it will all be artificial and dead. And um, it seems to me that this is where a very important role was played in Poland by the Institute of, um, of Parallel Civil Citizenship and Civic Formation. Because concurrently to this subject that we studied at school, the citizenship, we also learned and we were educated and trained elsewhere under very different circumstances. They are on the one side of family as continuation of, um, of family upbringing in childhood. They were other places where, where we could hear or we could discuss well, what went on in Poland at the time, a very acute political crisis after the martial law in 1981, where we could in some close, some close friends 
express our discontent with the status quo at the time. And in a certain stance, we were brought up in a sort of ideal society. In the 1980s, 1970s, 1980s, among those people, we had very close, we had a very acute feeling of um, injustice, inequity, and about what went on in the country. People could see that the government may tell one thing, but may do something very different, and that uh, we see inequality that had to do with social and political position and the status of some and in absence of. And there were many, many things that made this feeling of injustice and feeling that your rights were impinged upon, and it made it something very widespread. And people began to look for answers to questions what our society should be instead, should be like instead. And people saw, sought and looked for it elsewhere and found all kinds of answers, but practically everybody was looking for them. May I give you several examples from my well, own private life? Because it's simpler for me to probably give you, explain to you what was it all about. Well, for example, uh, 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 for example, uh, so one of the most uh, important uh, 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 events, a place uh, in the 70s and 80s uh, in, in, in Poland, uh, where the future uh, uh, the, the civil civil society was being uh, uh, shaped, and where the, the people were getting some uh, initial elements of civil education, and uh, that place was. Uh, was the Catholic Church, uh, the Catholic Church. Uh, that was, at that time, uh, the most uh, uh, important uh, uh, oasis of freedom in Poland. And, uh, and it actually uh, showed, it, it set uh, 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 it uh, from, from a different angle. It showed the, the morality of, of the society. So while the Communist Party was saying that uh, that the ideology was uh, uh, was was saying that the morality the morality uh, is is something that uh, coincides with the general direction uh, of the uh, line of the communist party uh, so what's uh, uh, what what is what is propagated declared by the party uh, is, uh, is 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 uh, is is moral but the church was saying that that the human being is, is much more important. But and, uh, so it was very important because it was a completely different set of values. And actually, it, it, it uh, allowed us to save our, our mentality uh, uh, from, this, uh, 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 from this confusion uh, uh, because that communist ideology ruled the roost at that time. And it was very difficult to fight it. And uh, so I uh, came up face to face uh, with those, uh, 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 so with the Catholic Church, and uh, so where the, where I received the the basics uh, of uh, of civil uh, education, uh, which was different from what we were taught at school. And then the next stage was university. The university, uh, though it seems strange, but uh, there, yes, I, I I received more information about civil society, like the majority of young people, uh, so I was an idealist, uh, and I wanted to change the world, and um, so I was only 20, 21 years of age, and uh, I, I, I thought that I, c I can't change the world, and, uh, uh, but, but uh, who, who to go to to get advice how to do that, how to change this status uh, quo? And, uh, and uh, so what we didn't know where to go, who to ask, but the situation in Poland uh, at that time was, so if a young guy just comes up to a professor and asks directly about certain things related to political, public life, and uh, so he found himself in a very dubious, uh, shaky uh, position, uh, because from the viewpoint of uh, the professor, 
uh, uh, so he, he the student could be an ideal uh, uh, honest uh, open uh, sincere guy but could be a provocateur uh, uh, as well uh, agent uh, 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 so that uh, eventually so the answer of the uh, professor could lead uh, could take him uh, to uh, the interrogation room of the secret police and I uh, and the, the professors, uh, the faculty uh, knew that. And once I came up to uh, one of the uh, teachers, and I came up to him, and, and uh, he didn't answer. I said, "What? What? What do we need to do?" And then, uh, then he said, "Okay, let's uh, let me uh, let me think about it. We'll we'll meet next week, and then I will I will give you uh, some answers." Uh, and uh, uh, next week, he gave me the list the list of books that I was supposed to read. And uh, so then it was, the books were dedicated to the self-organization of Polish youth in the first half of the 19th century. So that, that, that was what uh, those books were about. So the first half of the 19th century and, uh, and the 80s of the 20th century, I think a big span of time, but I understood what he wanted to say. So uh, I understood what kind of idea he wanted to convey uh, because uh, mm, uh, because he, he knew that uh, even if I were uh, 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 had been a provocateur, uh, so he would have been clean anyway because no, nothing wrong with those books uh, uh, of the youth movement uh, of a century ago. And uh, it was okay. So, and then he was suggesting me other books and I was reading them and I was getting the, uh, uh, the uh, needed answer, answers. Uh, and then th this, this professor just started to trust me more eventually and uh, as a Lubin at the Catholic University he uh, uh, he taught and uh, he and uh, so we uh, so we we learned different approaches to the self-organization uh, in in a society uh, self-governance in society it was very important for us uh, it was really an eye-opener uh, uh, for us another example uh, uh, was is, is related to Tolerance uh, has to do with tolerance. On the other hand, it's the uh, it's a widening, expanding of a geographic uh, uh, landscape uh, of, of a person. Uh, so, what, what about the tolerance, uh, the national uh, national minorities, and the tolerance? So, I want just to say a few words about that. Uh, uh, that, and, uh, because uh, uh, at that time. Uh, so among our teachers, uh, there was a person uh, 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 with a difficult past, very complicated past. Uh, uh, so he was uh, uh, he was uh, he was involved uh, during World War II. He was anti-Nazi, and then after war, he was uh, an uh, underground, uh, already anti-Bolshevik. During uh, the Nazis, he was an underground under under the Nazis, and he was. Uh, so he was. Uh, uh, the verdict was uh, capital punishment, and then uh, it was commuted uh, uh, to uh, uh, life imprisonment, uh, etc. So very difficult. And, and so because Stalin died, and that's why he was not uh, uh, executed. Uh, but but his head uh, uh, was brilliant. Mm. And. Um, mm. Uh, and it was not uh, it was not me uh, who uh, made steps uh, to uh, uh, to learn more from him, but uh, 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 but his uh, he was reading lectures, uh, mm, and uh, uh, that that related to uh, that, that he spoke about national minorities uh, living in Poland in the twenties and the thirties, uh, and uh, so I need to explain here that in the communist Poland. Uh, uh, so the country was considered to be homogeneous. So uh, officially it was homogeneous country. So there were no national minor minorities, no statistical minorities. So, so we're, we're all the same. And uh, and uh, so each national mi minority had one organization that was uh, controlled by the Ministry of Interior. And, uh, and uh, so they kept them under very strict scrutiny and control. And uh, and uh, so their rights were not respected in any way. Those national minorities' uh, rights, and uh, and uh, at that time there were about a million, a million, uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of people living in Poland uh, who 
uh, who uh, thought themselves Lithuanians, Jew, uh, Jews, uh, Belarusians, Ukrainians. Uh, it did, it, uh, it, it did, didn't make any difference uh, because they did not regard them as different national minorities at all. And uh, I, uh, so we lived uh, deeply convinced uh, that uh, we're all Poles and we're all the same. Uh, we're all uh, a, a homogeneous uh, nation. Um, and uh, so we have one common history in Poland uh, going back. Certainly with communists, uh, we, uh, uh, we somehow mm, Uh, so we uh, s certainly w w we had the different different uh, views of different points in history, but uh, but otherwise, uh, uh, so we had one major picture one of, of of Poland of the history of Poland and one major uh, uh, vision uh, about uh, the mm, and other nations. Uh, uh, so we're kind of different world. So the space. So it was not. It has nothing to do with it. It doesn't concern us. So we are homogeneous one nation. So, <coughs> and uh, and uh, this this teacher, uh, his name was uh, Wisław Szpakowski, and uh, he 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 would give he would give to each uh, student of his seminar, uh, participant of his seminar. Uh, so he would give him uh, assign to him one national minority to 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 uh, to prepare. Uh, uh, the, to identify challenges, to study this national minority, to work with national minorities, so to prepare a small, a small paper. Uh, so then, uh, uh, Poland before World War II, just to show the history, the backdrop, information, the, the, the background, uh, to show the problems, the challenges, and so step by step. So each person was assigned just one of these national mi minorities, and it was certainly a good uh, training. Uh, 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 on tolerance, because now we realize how intolerant uh, the Polish uh, politics of the 20s and 30s uh, was, and uh, but we need to realize that uh, that our neighbors and uh, they that it was not the, the Soviet Union our major neighbor, but but uh, and it's we we started to see that it's not just the Russians or the Soviets, but it's Lithuanians, Ukrainians, by the Russians, there are Jews, uh, uh, Germans, and, and that's and uh, hundreds of nationalities uh, inhabit uh, the USSR, and uh, so that was another revelation. And in the 80s, uh, so it was very difficult to find uh, any literature on this subject matter. And uh, so the censorship uh, was very uh, 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 sensitive uh, uh, to such literature, and uh, because certainly they portrayed the events uh, from a different angle, uh, completely. And so the ruling, the ruling Communist Party, and uh, but as a, as a result, we can say that uh, owing to this professor, so I got very good education, good background. Uh, of uh, uh, some about uh, real neighbors of Poland, uh, not so much about the Soviet Union, but the uh, but the peoples uh, living in around us, the peoples living just across the border, across the border, and uh, and there are many examples like that. Uh, 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 the teachers helped the family. Uh, uh, the people of my generation. Uh, so I can give lots of examples like that because as different people, so this uh, this this way of learning, this way of uh, acquisition of knowledge, uh, uh, acquisition was different for every person of my generation and age. And uh, so then, uh, so there was a lot of some as that means self-printed books, uh, so that were printed clandestinely. Mm. And that was very popular as well, popular reading. And uh, then uh, the, the time came uh, when the communist uh, authorities allowed uh, to, to try a little bit freedom. And, and June the 4th, uh, on June the 4th, uh, people were, went to vote. They went to vote, and they were ready to vote uh, for this uh, voting procedure. And the result was... Uh, and that uh, the voting uh, took place uh, the, uh, the 
uh, 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 simultaneously in the lower chamber of, of, of the parliament. Uh, so then 33% of seats were uh, and uh, were elected uh, freely uh, on the basis of the elections and 30% uh, 30, 30 mm. so a kind of booked for uh, for election uh, booked for by the communist party and and the senate uh, the upper chamber uh, where where we uh, we were needed to uh, to elect 100 senators and and the uh, elections were free completely free and uh, out of 100 senators 99 senators uh, uh, were returned return from the opposition. 99% out of 100 uh, were returned from opposition. And actually, the society, uh, it's very telling because the society immediately, uh, we could see how the society evaluated the results of the role of the Communist Party uh, for more than 40 years if 99% of senators were from opposition. And uh, so, but certainly, uh, so, uh, so without the church, without the family, without the university, so without this fertile, fertile background that had been, uh, you know, prepared uh, uh, for the coming elections, it wouldn't have been possible. It wouldn't have been possible. And and then and certainly self-learning, uh, self-education, acquisition of knowledge, exercising your mind, and uh, uh, so that that uh, that certainly. Uh, worked. So this is the theory and uh, and in the and the implications practice. It's my 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 private personal experience of civil education. That's how it all went about. Mm. And uh, if there are uh, any questions, uh, I can take your questions now. Mr. Ambassador, just I'm um, happy to see you here. Uh, I can't imagine the, our seminar without your participation, and uh, I'm very happy that you're here. So let's start with Kaliningrad. It's it's, it's closer than others. Uh, thank you, uh, Ivan Vlasov, Kaliningrad. Uh, 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 thank you very much. Uh, uh, Okay, I'll ask. I'll ask in Russian now. Yes, thank you. We'll, we'll recognize it. Yes, I will appreciate it if you say it in, in Russian. So that two years ago, in July 2012, first time in the history of Russia, they launched a new project on uh, 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 no, no visa uh, movement uh, between U uh, Russia and EU. So the the near boundary. Uh, 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 locations. So because ca the, the Kaliningradians uh, don't have just to get a Schengen visa to go to Poland, test, but they can get a special card for five years, and it's not a Schengen visa, and uh, so because we're neighboring, so we can just enter three, uh, uh, so 120 kilometers into the territory of Poland with this card. And uh, over two years of uh, this program, of uh, the existence of this program, uh, so there were about uh, 3 million people crossed the borders, and the Russians crossed the borders 1.7 million times. And they actually, and they brought uh, uh, 130 million uh, uh, zlotes, about 31 million euros. Is this, uh, uh, are these figures, uh, are, is, it, is it good enough ground for the Polish government uh, uh, to raise an, an issue uh, at the European Union uh, uh, for no, no visa movement uh, of the Russians uh, on the territory of Poland and maybe in the territory of EU. EU. Maybe we need to abolish uh, visas in view, uh, in view of uh, these figures and numbers. So I need to, there were six, uh, more than six million times. Uh, uh, so half uh, of those who came across it, so there were uh, Russian citizens and another half, and three million were Polish citizens. So six million times. Uh, so Russian-Polish citizens crossed the borders uh, yeah, because some people had visas and some people had those cards. Uh, uh, so th th those cards, yeah. And uh, so six million times uh, uh, people uh, crossed the border. Uh, Russia, we have no grounds uh, uh, to, to complain about this. Uh, so we're happy with the results. 
Yeah, so what, what we have here is certainly justifies our expectations, uh, meets our expectations. Uh, 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 no negative uh, things. So everything is <coughs> that many were afraid, our partners in the European Union were afraid that they would had g uh, uh, they would give them, uh, them the cards, they would just illegally migrate, emigrate, and they would go illegally across the borders, they would go buy buy products and then they will wind up in Portugal. No, this is this is not the case. It's, it's never materialized, never happened. Uh, people just went there and back. And then this mechanism certainly contributes uh, to uh, bringing nations together, people together, so they're becoming uh, 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 so live on this uh, 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 boundary uh, areas, uh, border, border areas, who, who inhabit those border areas. Uh, uh, but uh, the EU is uh, is organized in in a fashion, in such a fashion that such decisions uh, uh, require a consensus. Uh, uh, it's not uh, it's not a one-sided you know decision. So we cannot decide it by ourselves. So, so it, it's imp impossible. So we need just to get the consensus of other 27 states uh, to get them to agree to this, and then it can fly. And uh, we, uh, uh, even uh, uh, even introduction of uh, of, of this in, in this form in, in which it exists now. So I mean those uh, uh, border cards, uh, and uh, 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 is already goes outside the formal uh, uh, so framework allowed by the European Union because the formal fra uh, regulatory framework provides for that this mechanism concerns. Uh, 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 so ter ter territory only 30 kilometers along the along the border, uh, 30 kilometers along the border on both sides. Yes, but 30 kilometers. Uh, it, it means that the, the whole city of Kaliningrad is outside uh, uh, the the 30 kilometer uh, uh, so territory uh, from the border. So this makes no. S and then and the 30 kilometers uh, on the Polish border. Uh, so, which is only bogs, marshes, and and then woods. Uh, there is nothing else, and so then, uh, so 30. Uh, so then, uh, for the Russians, it's good. So there are wild boars that they can hunt. But for the people, it makes no sense. And uh, and uh, w what we managed to get, so to widen this zone, just to get it to 120 kilo, not nothing. Uh, for the entire Kaliningrad region. So the fact that we managed to get them to agree to it. And uh, not only 30 kilometers uh, uh, border zone, and then expanded on the Polish side. The zone was expanded to Orshkin, Gdansk, and Gdynia. And uh, 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 so at this point, this is the maximum of what we could do in the circumstances. And uh, so a similar uh, mechanism. Uh, so they would tr w they would do the same with Ukraine, uh, but uh, but not a single big city. Uh, Lvov uh, is not covered by that zone, although it's close to the border. It's outside that that zone. Mm. Uh, with regards to uh, the introduction of no visa uh, free uh, uh, visa regime, uh, so then we need to take it uh, up with the Euro Commission, uh, European Commission. We support, we always say, uh, that uh, that free uh, movement, uh, n uh, no visa movement, always contributes uh, to better economic ties, uh, better understanding, uh, better relationship. We always stress that, but but some, some countries, so they work on the assumption of the problems uh, related to migrants from the south, uh, and uh, so they very painfully react to this, uh, to any attempts uh, to uh, to remove the visa regime um, and liberalize uh, this uh, visa policy, um, irrespective uh, in which direction it they're trying to to do it. Okay. Ilenushko, Saint Petersburg. Uh, uh, remembering your experience uh, an ambassador and a diplomat uh, what are the most difficult issues that are uh, very difficult to agree with Russia in which spheres uh, so the ideas and images of Russia and Polish coincide and where it's most difficult to agree on with Russia 
I will answer diplomatically. The most difficult, uh, the most difficult agreement uh, is is the issues uh, of, on which we have different positions. Uh, uh, so then, which ones? Uh, what, uh, so that uh, so exactly these. Yeah. So it is difficult to agree on uh, on the points where we hold different positions. What w w what are they? Uh, certainly. So we do have different approaches to uh, to do. Uh, to history, uh, to history, some points in history, uh, and uh, so some some practical uh, uh, questions that that are kind of so there are implications of the history differences, and uh, so for example, so the history, so then cutting uh, uh, case, uh, this mass mass murder, so it's all obvious. Uh, so, uh, so what happened? How it happened? Uh, what occurred? We know that, everyone knows, uh, and uh, and it it looks like th there are no secrets anymore. Uh, but we always get uh, from uh, from Russia only s some documents. Uh, so no, 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 uh, th these documents, they they are not telling us anything new. But still, uh, uh, we we cannot get uh, we cannot get uh, get these documents from Russia. And this, so they are still refusing to give us these documents. So what's the why are they, are they holding them back? They should have given it uh, because we know it everything, everything. Then we have different positions in. Uh, uh, I uh, thought so there was some progress, actually, so concerning this position, this divergence of op uh, opinions, of points, and the best proof of that is the work, uh, is the is the uh, is the team on uh, uh, complicated issues, uh, challenging issues, special team that has been set up was set up in 2010 uh, to, to 2002 and started to work efficiently in 2008 only. So that's the team on difficult questions, and uh, it uh, includes historians, scientists. Uh, uh, and they are trying just to uh, to understand uh, uh, so our common past. Uh, and uh, so four years ago, they uh, they they published jointly a book. Uh, so the the new spots, black spots. Uh, so the the main the main points of divergences and uh, misunderstandings uh, of Polish and Russian relations in the 19th 20th century. And uh, for each uh, little. Uh, point in history, uh, so there is a, a parallel uh, viewpoint, uh, Russian viewpoint and Polish viewpoint. So for each black spot or the white spot, so so there are two different angles from which the interpretation is done, uh, Russian and uh, Polish. Uh, this this book helps. Uh, uh, so let's put this. So politically, it's good uh, uh, because they 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 got together, so they sat at the same table and then they developed a new book. But on the other hand, uh, I'm telling you this as a historian, as when a person is reading uh, 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 this material, so then he gets a multifaceted approach, uh, uh, different angles, different approaches, because usually we, we take one book, one point of view, right? But, uh, but this book contained, so it allowed you to look at the same historic issue, event, from different angles, uh, Polish and Russian. Excellent book, very good. Uh, work so this has some pr so so th I've given you two examples of divergences where the most difficult to agree. Thank you very much uh, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, my question will not be of, of applied nature; it will be a theoretical uh, question. So concerning your subject matter about uh, civil education, you said that the civil education. Uh, is is uh, rights, uh, obligations, and valor, and uh, I remember a book of your uh, compatriot Marina Soska, so the research in history and morality, and so and uh, bourgeois and knights, and so I remember that made a big deep impression on me. This book uh, did, and uh, so because uh, many uh, uh, components of this book uh, so were written in the besieged uh, Warsaw, so to World War Two besieged Warsaw, and uh, so that lady is giving seminars on the history of morality. And uh, so then this this valor and this uh, staunch attitude amazing uh, but mm, what uh, s uh, look what's interesting uh, so that dem democracy and uh, and uh, uh, civil society uh, are the manifestations of the bourgeois society and and uh, so these traits uh, especially valor courage uh, uh, so are the manifestations of aristocratic and knight uh, uh, morality uh, so could you uh, uh, Elaborate on that assumption. 
Uh, that's uh, that's a, a difficult question, especially when we talk about the uh, historic perspective. I do not relate democracy with bourgeois society, uh, because uh, actually, uh, first, the first time in history of democracy, uh, Greek uh, Greek uh, policies, uh, they 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 had been in existence for many centuries before bourgeois uh, uh, s uh, system came along. Uh, uh, certainly, it, it differed. Uh, so the their democracy is certainly different from the uh, from what we understand by democracy in the 18th, 19th century. But it was it was democracy. Uh, uh, it was a democracy, uh, and uh, uh, democracy vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, 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 to uh, so to some uh, manifestations of democracy. Uh, in big cities, cities, uh, city states, uh, Greek uh, ancient uh, city states, uh, and in Italy the same thing uh, 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 was in, uh, evolving, and in North Europe and uh, Poland, and in spite of the fact that it was formerly a monarchy um, yeah, uh, for uh, for. Uh, for the for the for the last centuries of history, to, uh, it was considered to be a country uh, where there was a great deal of uh, democratic uh, democrat. It was democracy. It was a democracy because the the kings were elected. Uh, uh, so then they know the nobility democracy. The democracy of the nobility uh, 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 until it kind of. Uh, uh, Eventually ended, uh, so but it functioned in the 18th century very well. So I would not directly connect uh, 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 so democracy with uh, the appearance of the bourgeois society, and, uh, and that's first point. Second point, and the, the second point, uh, the uh, morality uh, in democracy, morality in democracy. Uh, and uh, if we want to find historic, uh, 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 so uh, uh, virtue, uh, v valor, uh, acme, uh, so which was uh, uh, that was characteristic of Athens uh, during the Pericles times, uh, in Sparta and others, so valor, uh, courage, uh, mm, uh, and uh, that was characteristic uh, feature of those cities and. Uh, yeah, so the so can interpret it differently. Okay. Minerally water. My question has to do every day I face the issues of uh, of of uh, find uh, uh, finding jobs uh, for the disabled. That's a big a big issue to find jobs for them. And uh, but one of the reasons why is kind of biased attitude to, uh, to uh, uh, the disabled. So in your country, uh, can you uh, uh, does this civil education help uh, from school times uh, to uh, to reduce uh, so this intense dislike of the disabled? I I don't know. I don't know what uh, so this how wh uh, what the civil education looks like at school uh, because my children already have grown out of school so they are not at school any longer uh, and uh, and then uh, so they, they but the youngest uh, one has not yet started school uh, but um, uh, but uh, we we are paying it a great deal of attention to it because it's a, it's an issue of social exclusion. Uh, 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 there are uh, so there are different different types of exclusions. Uh, so you just identified one uh, social exceptional exclusion from society. So that 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 function uh, uh, is uh, which is uh, which is probably one of the most uh, uh, so widely spread, but not the only one. Uh, and uh, so we can give a, a list of many more. Uh, and it seems to me that uh, in today's uh, Poland, I suggest uh, it is also an element of uh, civic uh, education and enlightenment. Uh, the uh, emphasis is placed uh, on uh, 
the fact that the disabled people with fewer opportunities are to be offered all the conditions uh, to uh, not to to be dropped out of uh, uh, the um, normal life, including a uh, non-barrier environment. Uh, and uh, today's standard uh, reads that uh, that uh, in all public uh, institutions and organizations, uh, uh, non-barrier environment is to be uh, ensured for uh, disabled people including uh, uh, special elevators, uh, ramps, uh, other things. Uh, first, we had to work with uh, people's uh, mentality so that uh, would uh, uh, realize the importance uh, of uh, such an activity. Then uh, it was necessary to find uh, uh, funding uh, because uh, it's often that it's not it doesn't come from uh, public funds, it comes from private funds as well. So uh, the ultimate outcome is that we have an environment uh, uh, that uh, even those people who are unwilling to contribute are made to do so. And uh, I can think of a number of examples uh, when even uh, corporate uh, entities uh, uh, began uh, making their contributions in um, office uh, centers, office plazas. Uh, we can see the same uh, uh, devices uh, for uh, non-barrier uh, environment so that uh, disabled people can get uh, 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 wherever they want to get uh, without any uh, obstacles. And uh, there is also a discussion uh, uh, what are the limits, the uh, boundaries of uh, the attempts uh, to remove all barriers uh, since uh, if uh, uh, people are uh, sick, uh, if people are railing, and then perhaps uh, some special elevators, uh, wheeled elevators can help. And uh, uh, there are some uh, people who are blind or um, deaf and uh, dumb, and uh, uh, they are also to be helped uh, by uh, the state. We can think of some other uh, physical disadvantages but uh, a question arises, why uh, do we help uh, uh, those disabled people and not those who uh, suffer from cancer? Same uh, man and uh, uh, whose life is more important for us, a uh, child with cancer or uh, 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 a child uh, with dis some disabilities? and. Uh, uh, it's where we have some moral and uh, financial uh, situations that are quite difficult and complex. Uh, and that's uh, something where you cannot uh, find uh, one answer that would uh, fi fit all questions. Novosibirsk. It's nearly the far east. Uh, sorry. For the European part of Russia, Novosibirsk is very close to Khabarovsk. I spent 10 years in Blagoveshchensk, so I know that uh, starting from Barnaul, all the territories uh, rendered just as the same. Your Excellency, uh, perhaps uh, uh, you might have heard that. Uh, a very unknown uh, um, uh, Polish uh, uh, group, which is uh, Begemot or Hippopotamus, uh, became uh, quite known. Uh, 
But my question about not that group, but um, I would like to ask what initiatives, what activities uh, does the Polish embassy support in uh, Barnaul and uh, Novosibirsk? And uh, if you are interested, I can uh, acquaint you with some projects that you can consider. Certainly, we can discuss uh, those projects if you have uh, sound ideas. Personally, I visited both uh, Novosibirsk, Barnaul, and uh, Tomsk. And uh, we have uh, a consulate in Irkutsk, which uh, uh, reaches uh, those uh, cities and helps to organize some cultural events. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, and sometimes they uh, render support to some Polish organizations. Uh, and uh, the embassy of Poland uh, that uh, is headquartered in Moscow over the uh, recent years uh, has been trying to uh, invigorate and promote economic ties. So uh, by both in Novosibirsk and in Barnaul, we held uh, large-scale workshops uh, last fall. Um, uh, about 30 uh, entrepreneurs from Poland uh, came to visit and attend those workshops in uh, Novosibirsk and Altai regions. And uh, various workshops and other events uh, were held uh, there, but uh, they were business-oriented. But uh, anyway, uh, don't think that we never look uh, beyond the Ural Mountains. We do. Anton, your question, please. Uh, thank you very much and, uh, for your presentation, but uh, I would like to apologize, but my question uh, will be again associated with history. History is a very important uh, matter in uh, Russian-Polish relations. I would uh, be very interesting uh, to learn your opinion. What is history for me? Is it uh, for you? Is it uh, something objective, or it's a product uh, um, of an agreement between uh, various groups, various peoples, like uh, uh, Marxists think? But if uh, it's just a social contract, a uh, social pact uh, about history, but in this case it's uh, something that is quite cynical. I suppose I'll start with a different thing uh, responding to your question. Uh, the uh, World Cup uh, is going to start uh, tomorrow. Can you uh, recall in some situations that you saw some images uh, and footage on TV and then uh, kept on discussing things uh, uh, for months, uh, years, whether uh, there was uh, um, uh, the play with your, with your hand, uh, was a fault, uh, a kick or something. Uh, those events, uh, those uh, games uh, are watched by people in uh, real time and still uh, people keep on arguing for years, uh, failing to come to terms, uh, and they are arguing about things they watched, they saw with their own eyes. And uh, we uh, cannot expect uh, from history that we agree uh, on some events that uh, took place some 300 years ago, and the event that uh, were never a sin. Uh, or watched uh, by any one of the living people. Uh, so such expectations would be quite strange. And uh, there is no history to touch, uh, and, you know. There is no real history that uh, we can be sure of. And uh, it could be just some uh, traveling time. Even uh, anything that happened uh, three minutes ago, two hours ago, uh, or 200 years ago, it's history. But uh, uh, people are so designed that uh, our brains need some history uh, to work. And no matter whether uh, we would like it or not, but 
uh, histories downloaded into our brains. And it's uh, something that the people find in their brains uh, that uh, people make their conclusions on. And uh, uh, should uh, people live in peace and concord, it's uh, very important uh, uh, to see it that historical experience of various communities wouldn't contradict uh, one another, wouldn't be in conflict, uh, since uh, um, uh, otherwise uh, it would be a conflict that is embedded in our minds. That is one thing I would like to stress. And then Uh, there is another aspect uh, that uh, derives uh, from our um, uh, upbringing, our raising. Say, uh, I read a book by a philosopher, and uh, then I saw some uh, specific example, and uh, the two things looked uh, entirely differently although uh, the idea behind uh, could be the same, but uh, it's much easier uh, to make your judgments based on your own assumptions uh, and uh, based on something that uh, is not uh, abstract, but which is our history, Polish, Russian, or French. And on the one hand, um, I do have some concerns uh, that uh, uh, the Russian and Polish vision of history are too different. But on the other hand, I uh, realize it's, uh, it's natural. And uh, in, most, uh, recent, in, the, in the most recent history of Poland, uh, there are a number of examples that are related to other uh, nations. And uh, uh, we keep on uh, revising uh, our uh, assumptions, our postures, trying to come to a common uh, denominator in Polish Jewish, Polish German, Polish Ukrainian, Polish uh, Lithuanian history. Uh, so I think the process is quite natural. And uh, what is important here is um, just uh, to have uh, honest, decent uh, um, approach and uh, be ready for a compromise. Thank you, Your, Ex uh, Your Excellency. I am Partos Kaskanyan from the uh, Yerevan uh, School for Political Studies. My question uh, concerns some uh, issues of foreign politics policy. Poland uh, uh, joined NATO some time ago, and uh, it's quite a promoter of the uh, uh, European alliances. and. Uh, uh, so I think uh, that perhaps uh, there is a relationship between NATO's ex expansion eastward and uh, uh, NATO bilateral partnerships, uh, uh, because uh, the way I see it, if uh, the partnership uh, goes on successfully and then it turns into the membership uh, action plan, uh, then uh, those countries involved in the partnership uh, um, are losing other partners uh, or they are losing um, uh, their territories, as was the case uh, with uh, Georgia. And uh, same thing may happen to Ukraine. Uh, although, um, on, the one, on the other hand, uh, there was a vision that every country is uh, sovereign uh, in their plans to uh, ensure its security, to maintain its security. But uh, at the same time, their cho choice should not uh, ruin uh, regional security, should not damage uh, uh, regional security and turn it into a regional arms race.
I don't think I uh, have any clear-cut answers to, to your questions, especially uh, to your uh, last question. Uh, since uh, I cannot uh, take the liberty to make judgments uh, about who is right and who is wrong. And uh, certainly we need to uh, point uh, out that uh, um, uh, NATO currently doesn't make any uh, uh, plans of uh, further eastward expansion. And uh, but uh, the um, uh, deadline will be in uh, this fall when uh, NATO will hold its uh, next uh, summit meeting. But uh, uh, I believe that uh, there are no decisions of that kind in the pipeline. But uh, if you look at the uh, freedom of countries to make their choice, uh, uh, the choice of their sovereign future. Hypothetically, uh, all uh, the countries uh, um, have uh, that uh, uh, possibility. But in practical terms, uh, it's, uh, it varies on uh, case-by-case uh, basis. And each nation uh, uh, is to, to make their choice, uh, uh, realizing what they will gain and what they will lose. Uh, if, uh, in case with uh, Na uh, speaking of NATO, if a country makes a uh, choice in favor of NATO, then the, the nation will uh, gain something and lose something. But uh, if they don't make that choice, uh, they will certainly uh, lose something too. And uh, the uh, question is uh, um, how uh, people assess the uh, balance uh, between the two sides. Uh, uh, it's hard for me to speak of Georgian situation in Poland. Uh, we also lost something, but we gained much more. And uh, uh, and uh, we've uh, been in NATO for 15 years now, and uh, after that time, uh, I can uh, be certain that uh, uh, the uh, balance, the ratio here is uh, positive for Poland. Uh, you please, at the window. I'm Nikita Malchikov from Moscow. I have two questions. Uh, one is theoretical and the other is philosophical. I think uh, Poland is one of the most convincing and successful examples uh, of uh, what we call uh, transitional justice. Uh, um, so I wonder uh, uh, where did that balance uh, come from uh, in those processes? Uh, since on the one hand uh, that those processes uh, bring about some positive things, uh, removing uh, from power those who are connected with the uh, totalitarian regimes. But on the other hand, uh, um, those processes can uh, grow into some repressive uh, methods, uh, something that we can see in Ukraine. And my philosophical question is about Charles Montesquieu's statement uh, made in the middle of the 18th century who stressed that uh, for Polish people uh, the main uh, um, 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 desire is uh, uh, independence, while for the British it is freedom. And uh, uh, can you some, uh, identify that uh, the time period when uh, independence grew into a freedom for Poland? First, uh, uh, that transitional justice question. Uh, actually, uh, uh, that process was not planned. It came as a natural phenomenon, and uh, uh, although uh, in the pa uh, over the, the past 25 years we had some difficulties <coughs> with that process, but uh, by and large, uh, uh, Poland 
managed to navigate uh, um, uh, those troubled times and cope with the problem. And I can identify two important aspects uh, of the problem. Justice is one thing. Uh, people who committed uh, some crimes uh, 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 in the communist system uh, were to be made accountable for if uh, they are really to blame because uh, there were uh, uh, crimes indeed, executions of uh, workers uh, uh, following the introduction and position of this uh, state of siege. And um, it certainly uh, was the justice uh, to intervene and uh, fix that problem. On the other hand, uh, uh, the fate of uh, informers, agents of the uh, secret services. And uh, uh, in this sense, uh, uh, we had a lot of ideas. Some uh, suggested uh, we would decide we would forget about them. Others uh, favored some punishment of those agents. Uh, but in the end of the day, uh, we approved of the option that uh, 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 that uh, envisaged uh, t uh, mm, some um, uh, various things. If uh, somebody was in power, that person had to uh, make a, a, an admission, a c c confession. And uh, certainly uh, the state had to safeguard those people from blackmail if uh, somebody takes a high position. And uh, he used to be uh, an informer of secret police before. And if somebody knows about that, uh, then uh, the, the, the person who knows about uh, that uh, official's past can uh, exercise pressure on that uh, official. So the state uh, had to insure itself from such uh, cases. Uh, the other option um, uh, was related to those who uh, ran f for um, some uh, uh, elections. And the, the idea was that uh, voters uh, had to be aware of the past of uh, those uh, candidates or nominees. That was that. If somebody confesses, and it missed the fact uh, he uh, was an informer but uh, was not uh, involved in any uh, crimes, and if people uh, uh, are ready to vote for such a person despite his past, then it cannot be helped. But uh, but uh, um, the approaches uh, by the state um, to that problem um, are based on two things. Uh, one is security, and the other is uh, the purity of the political process. It would be a lie if I said that uh, we have addressed that problem, we have fixed everything. It's still being debated, and, uh, and uh, uh, people are emotional about that, but again, it's, it's not uh, um, uh, the priority, and uh, 25 years p have passed since the time, and uh, most, uh, most of those people who used to be informers of secret police are not uh, no longer active uh, citizens and uh, do not take the positions they had uh, 25 years ago. And uh, s responding to your second question about independence and freedom, uh, we can be independent from somebody. And uh, Poland, uh, uh, throughout the 19th century, 
was fighting for its independence from Prussia, from Austria, from Russia, while freedom, uh, again, it's uh, very complex, it's a very um, uh, difficult and multi, multi-tier uh, matter. Freedom uh, can help you to perceive human rights uh, that uh, um, are adherent uh, and inherent in uh, in people. I think that we have uh, uh, all the uh, possibilities for that in today's Poland. And uh, at, at least uh, the majority of the Polish uh, population believe uh, that way. Uh, although there are various rankings, it's, uh, uh, there is a ranking of economic freedom, and uh, Poland uh, is not good there. Uh, Poland in that ranking is behind uh, Singapore, Holland, United States of America and some other countries. There are some other rankings. Uh, such as uh, um, human rights, uh, human rights, and, uh, uh, civil rights, uh, uh, Freedom House uh, keeps uh, watch on that. There are some other rankings uh, that uh, uh, indicate and measure level of corruptions in the country and uh, put together. It gives us uh, um, a picture that uh, helps us to see if, uh, to what extent the country is free. So all those things are pretty well intertwined. Economic freedom, political freedom, freedom of press, corruption level. Uh, They're all intertwined uh, since uh, corruption uh, runs uh, counter fair competition. And if so, it runs counter uh, economic freedom, meaning that uh, somebody just um, through corruption takes more of economic freedom than um, uh, they deserve. So that's uh, my answer. Uh, a last short question from Luda Klimovich. Um, Ludmila Klimovich from Olyanovsk, I would like to revisit uh, your original topic, uh, civic, which is civic education. Civic education is supposed to be a continuous process. And what age do you think uh, civic education can be started, and uh, who is to play the key role? Which institutions? Uh, from uh, think it can be started uh, the moment when uh, um, uh, the person starts communicating with uh, other persons. Uh, probably it can be started even in kindergarten. That's when uh, kids make friends, uh, uh, learn how to play and to play fair or unfair. First it's football, then something else, and uh, you uh, just transfer your uh, habits to some other areas as you grow. And as for institutions, uh, I think uh, all of them uh, can be involved. Because you can uh, uh, get ba bad experience everywhere. Okay, did the colleagues time us uh, to summarize the session? Um, I may uh, be mistaken, but I think uh, starting from 2007 or 2008, the Republic of Poland and uh, Polish uh, organizations uh, uh, became uh, uh, one of the most important and leading partners uh, of the school. We started our co cooperation with uh, uh, the conduct of some uh, brief uh, fora in Poland, but then that co cooperation um, 
continued in uh, various formats. And in Zelenogorsk, uh, uh, even in Zelenogorsk, you can see that uh, Polish faction, quite a powerful faction, is always present at uh, the seminars. So uh, it's my uh, recommendation, as it's my offer, uh, to you make use of that uh, uh, week uh, of uh, staying together to speak, to communicate with uh, our Polish partners, and you will learn about many interesting things. And uh, what is most important, uh, keep track of uh, our next event uh, in uh, Poland. Lena, sorry, uh, perhaps uh, it will not be polite, but uh, I would say that some things uh, that we uh, learn in uh, uh, the countries of Eastern country, you never learn in the countries of Western Europe. And some knowledge uh, can be picked there. And I'm just passing uh, on to you uh, my impressions uh, from the participation in uh, Polish seminars. It was quite a discovery for me, because uh, you can really pick uh, a lot of knowledge. Uh, and uh, we really value a lot that kind of uh, cooperation. I told you just two examples, but in fact we cooperate on uh, many other lines and uh, it's publications and uh, the invitation of Polish experts and, and uh, uh, annual visits uh, um, um, to the seminars by His Excellency Mr. Ambassador. And um, I don't think that uh, Mr. Ambassador needs my uh, compliments, but uh, every time he comes, uh, the level of uh, uh, intellectual um, um, deliberations is quite high. Lena will uh, conclude uh, and uh, this, this session. What I would like to say, the words of gratitude uh, and uh, emphasis on our cooperation. This is important per se and uh, in the historical perspective because uh, history is uh, interpretation in the memory of uh, peoples of uh, the events uh, past. We have to know our history and we have to move forward. And this movement forward uh, is uh, well assisted uh, by Poland, because I think that Poland have uh, made a tremendous uh, uh, success. And besides, uh, which may not be quite diplomatic, but let me say that uh, Poland will help uh, and uh, protect Brussels from too much bureaucracy. And uh, indeed, uh, um, His Excellency the Ambassador is here. Uh, but uh, he is also as an expert, uh, um, and uh, we thank him um, for this uh, most uh, intellectual uh, session. Uh, Andre wrote to me these lines from Osip Mandelstam, the tender Poland where which, uh, which doesn't have a king. It's a line from, from Osip Mandelstam. Do you know where he was born? Do you know where? In Warsaw. Well, I know where he died. I know where he died. Uh, I would like to thank our expert uh, with a round of applause. I would like to... Mm, it is uh, quite uh, symbolic uh, to have uh, Yuli Bazana from Kaliningrad has uh, her, uh, her birthday and we all hope uh, to congratulate her this evening. Thank you very much.